One of the hardest parts about being a YouTube content creator is grabbing your attention right away so that you stay interested in what it is that I'm talking about. I typically have about 30 seconds to grab your attention and let you know that this is something that you want to see. Unfortunately, today I don't have a clever way of grabbing your attention. So today, all I can do is tell you that the plugin that I'm going to show you on today's video is one of the coolest and most well thought out plugins I've seen in a really long time. So no gimmicks, no hooks. We're going to get right into it right after my really quick intro. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plug interviews, tutorials, plus I want to show you all of the different tools to make your job just a little bit easier. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And of course, as always, if you take any value out of this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up for me. It helps with the algorithm. It lets YouTube know that you're enjoying the content that I'm making therefore they're going to show my videos to other people as well so the reason why i struggled with the intro of this video is because i wanted to actually say to you this plugin that i'm about to show you today could be the end of the original backpacks plugin that we've been using in rust for years but that's actually not true because this plugin actually works really well with backpacks so why would I tell you that this could be the end of backpacks? It really was an internal struggle. I'm glad I just moved past it and just got right into the video for you. So the plugin that we're talking about today is called Bag of Holding. It's available from Loan.Design and as always, the link is in the video description down below. So before you work yourself up and do a big tizzy, I know everyone is seeing the same thing. The price of this plugin is at $49.95. And after having spent some time working with this plugin in order to get ready to make this video, I very quickly realized the value that actually is in this plugin. So is it worth the $49.95? Absolutely, without question. However, how can I sit here in front of you and claim to be the most knowledgeable person on setting up Rust servers and dealing with plugins and not be able to tell you that I negotiated a sick deep discount for you guys. More about that later. So if you scroll down on the documentation, you're going to see that Black Lightning has actually set up like a quick start guide for you. Just a four step process that's going to get your plugin up and running on your server and then you can customize it later. We're going to do that exact same process right now, but I've added a couple of steps in there because you know that's who I am and that's what I do. So first things first, after you've purchased the plugin from Loan.Design and you've used the promo code that I've provided you, you're going to want to click on the download now button. It's going to download it to your local computer. Then of course you're going to take it from your download folder or wherever it happened to download and drop it into your oxide slash plugins folder and as long as you have plugin watchers turned on it's automatically going to compile that plugin for you if you don't have plugin watchers turned on you already know that you have to do an o.reload bag of holding in order for this plugin to actually compile if you don't know what plugin watchers are that means that that feature is already turned on so don't worry about what i just said so this is where my quick start process is going to change a little bit from black lightnings because he wants you to go in and immediately start playing with the plugin however i want you to make a couple of quick changes to the configuration file before you actually do that. So we go into our configuration folder and of course we open up the .json for bag of holding. Now I know that nothing on this configuration file is going to make any sense to you right now. Don't worry about it. Just follow along with these exact steps and then we're going to come back to the configuration file and I'm going to break this down for you a little bit more. So first things first, I want to enable gather mode. I want to change this from false to true. There's a UI setting on there which is default set to true. I'm going to change this to false a little bit later but for right now I'm going to show you what it does. And those are the only two things that I'm going to ask you to change before you actually go in game and start testing this out. So save your config. Of course, go back to your console and make sure you reload bag of holding. However, make sure you have the capitalization correctly because if you don't, it's not going to actually reload that plugin. So the next thing that we're going to do before we can actually start testing out the plugin is we're going to deal with permissions. I would suggest that you go into the admin permissions first before you actually start messing around what's going to affect your default group. Of course, we're going to go into the bag of holding permissions. All right, so the first thing that you're going to notice when you bring up the permissions for bag of holding is there's just over three pages of permissions. For right now, don't worry about all of that. We're going to get into it. It's really super simple. Right now, now, the only thing that I want you to deal with is the config permission. We want to grant that to the admin group and then the give bag permission. Those are the only two that I want you to deal with at this point. The kit give bag, I'm going to do on a separate video. So don't worry about that right now. This right here is a good start in order for you to be able to test out the plugin and see what it actually does. All right. So now that we have permissions, we're going to actually give ourselves a bag. 
So now would be a really good time for you to explain to you the different types of bags that are available as a part of Bag of Holding. So the bags are broken up into different categories, obviously the same categories that Rust already uses. So we've got one for food and medical, we've got one for items and construction, we've got one for resources and components, we've got one for weapons and tools, we've got a generic bag which will hold anything, and then of course we've got the big bag, the mama jama of bags, called the bag of holding, which will carry everything and it also has 42 slots available in it. We're gonna get into all that. I know that doesn't make any sense right now, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything as we go along. So I'm just gonna run the command B-O-H dot give bag and then my player name and then what type of bag I want to give myself. All right, so now as soon as I have a bag from the bag of holding plugin in my inventory, you can see that I have this GUI icon next to my hotbar, same as you would see if I had backpacks. Me personally, I don't like having GUIs on my screen, so I would actually turn that off, which is what I was talking about in the config file earlier. Plus, if you're the type of person that does like GUIs, then you probably already have the backpack GUI in that location. And yes, of course, you can move either or, but I just prefer to not have any GUI on my screens at all. So this right here is what the bag looks like by default. As soon as you install this plugin, this is what you're gonna see when you give yourself a bag. We're gonna get into that more later because you can actually change what skin is used on these bags. So let's click on open bag and this is where the magic can all happen. This gather feature right here is one of the coolest things I've seen in a really long time. So for right now let's just toggle this on so we're going to make it so that it says gather on. You're also going to notice that there's a little fire icon next to my bag right there as a visual indicator that we're in gather mode on this bag. And because I have a resources and components bag you're going to see something really cool happen. So I'm just going to go around and cut down a couple of trees here real quick and you're going to see something as soon as I go into my inventory and check it out. So here we go. That's good enough for right now. Let's go into my inventory and you're going to notice that none of that wood actually went into my inventory, but it did go into my bag of holding bag. So if we click on open bag, you're going to see, boom, there's your wood. So essentially what we've done is we've added a multiplier type system, or I've heard it referred to as a pagination system into our inventory so that we can automatically put different items into different containers or bags in our inventory. And it automatically sorts into those bags. Same thing with a stone. I don't have to do anything. I can just take down this stone node and it automatically goes into my bag of holding for resource and components. And of course, I just realized because of the graphic that I have going across the bottom of my screen you probably didn't see what was actually happening in my bag of holding so as you can see there above my head that is the current inventory of my bag of holding for resource and components i've now since given myself a couple of more bags so now i have food and medical i have items and construction i have weapons and tools plus i have a generic bag which will of course allow anything to go into it so if you're the type of person that likes having these uis on the screen then of course you can click on this bag right here and then it's going to take you into the ui for bag of holding and if you have multiple multiple bags in your inventory, you of course can scroll through and pick which bag you want to be dealing with. Another thing I should note while we're here is this orange bar on the right hand side. We're used to it indicating a damage meter for whatever item it is that we're looking at. However, this is showing us how much inventory is actually in this bag. And that happens across all of the different bags, no matter which category it is or which level you've upgraded it to. Yes, we can upgrade each one of these bags to different levels, allowing of course for more storage slots in each individual bag. But because I'm the type of person that doesn't like having any GUIs on my screen, I of course would go into the configuration file and disable this feature down on my left shoulder there, which to you looks like my right shoulder, but it's actually my left shoulder. So I would go back into the UI settings. I would then change this to false right here. Of course, save and reload the plugin and that UI button is going to go away, which is all well and good. However, now how do I get into that bag really quickly as opposed to going into my inventory and actually clicking on open bag? Well, Black Lightning has built in commands that we can actually bind to whatever key we want on our keyboard that is automatically going to open up this UI and allow us to scroll through the different bags that we have on our inventory. And of course, there's a bag open command, there's a bag next command, and there's also a bag prev or bag previous if you were cycling through your different bags. I just did the one key bind. I just used bag.open. I know that's really small for you guys. You probably can't even read that, but it just says bind space M space bag dot open. Now, once I have that done, I just simply hit the M key on my keyboard and it brings up the UI showing me all of the different bags that I have in my inventory. And I can press the M key again. It scrolls to the next bag, the next bag, the next bag. Once I get to the end of my bags, if I hit it one more time, it's going to close that and go back to gameplay. So obviously you can see if you need to get into a bag really quickly, you're in a gunfight, something like that. You're right in the middle of a raid and you need to access something that's in one of those bags. 
you can definitely do that. Okay, so now we have bags in our inventory. We've tested out the auto gather. We know that that's all working properly. So I've gone through and turned on the auto gather mode for each one of these individual bags that each have an individual job. And we're just gonna go into these loot containers and I'm just gonna do a quick hover loot over a whole bunch of inventory in here and we're gonna see what happens. So we're just gonna start going boom, 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 just like that. And as you can see, it started filling up my bag of holding bags until they were full and then it moved into just moving it into my regular inventory because it ran out of space so let's go into my bag of holding and let's see what happened so the first bag filled up with resources and or components in this case that it just happens to be resources the second bag is food and medical and it didn't quite fill up because I didn't have anything else going in there and then the third bag is clothing and armor so now would be a really good time to get into upgrading so that we have more than six slots available in each one of my bag of holding but before we get into all of that I want to bring your attention to the fact that I'm only allowed to be using three bags at any given time even though I happen to have five of them in my inventory so as you can see there we've got these two right here which I don't know if you can tell on that screen but they're actually grayed out so they're like locked out so that you can't actually access them that's a permissions thing and a configuration thing which we're gonna deal with here in just a minute so if we go into our permissions manager and back into bag of holding you're gonna see there's two features here that are tagged as unlimited the first unlimited permission is giving you the ability to utilize an unlimited unlimited number of bag of holding bags inside your backpack and then the second one is on your player character so from an admin perspective or a testing perspective maybe you want to grant these two permissions just to the admin group or maybe this could be a VAP feature that you're selling from your Tebex store I don't know which of course will then make it so that these are no longer grayed out anymore and I can start filling items into these bags as well by default the configuration is set up so that you can only have a maximum of three bags on your player character with items inside of them. By default, that same rule also applies to containers. So if we open up this box, you're gonna see that I can only have a maximum of three bag of holding bags inside this box with items inside of them. If I take one of these bags out, then of course we can start adding items to all of these other bags as well. But we can only have up to a maximum of three bag of holding bags in a container that have items in them. Obviously you can have as many empty bags as you want. There's no rules on that. It's just bags that have items in them that this rule applies to. It is also worth mentioning that if you do have backpacks installed on your server and you don't have that unlimited permission granted to you, you can't move any of these bag of holding bags into your backpack container either. But with that unlimited permission granted to us, we can of course put our bag of holding bags inside of our backpack as well. So before we get into how we can actually upgrade these bags so that they have more slots, I want to take this opportunity to tell you about some of the details that have gone over in the development of this plugin. I spent about three hours in a Discord call with Black Lightning going over all of these details and he bombarded me with a ton of information. And while I would love to tell you about every single detail, there's just way too much to fit into one video. But there are a couple of things that I want to tell you about. Because you just watched me put these bag of holding bags into my backpack, this should trigger a couple of different questions for you. What happens if you die and you don't have backpack features like keep on death and keep on wipe and all that other stuff? Let's say you have a normal backpack that drops on the ground once your player character has been killed. So as far as rust is concerned, when you have this bag of holding bag in your backpack, it's just a cheap little Halloween bag. It has very low value and a very low rarity setting. So it's a very common item. Therefore, that item will despawn out of your inventory very, very quickly because it's a low level item. You might have an M249 or some C4, something top tier inside that bag, but because rust only recognizes it as a Halloween loot bag, it could despawn very quickly. However, however, the developer of the plugin took this into consideration. So if your bag of holding bag inside of your backpack or even the backpack that drops on the ground from your player character dying, if it's empty, it's not going to make any changes to the despawn timer. However, if there's an item in there, it's going to change the despawn timer so that it's relative to what that item is. This is very important information and it's not even something that I would have even considered until it actually happened in a real life situation. So the long and the short of it is, is the plugin has been written in a way that it protects the item inside of your bag of holding bag even though you've been killed or die or for whatever reason your player character is dead and that item has dropped on the ground. Another thing that I want to tell you about is the man hours that have gone into the development of this plugin. So Black Lightning himself of course has spent the majority of the development of the plugin and we're talking months here. We're talking like between three and six months they spent developing this plugin and then there was like a two-month beta testing period where it was actually installed on real live servers with population so that they could 
stress test the plugin and find the bugs and fix them before there was an actual official launch of the plugin. So Better Dead Than Zed had it running on their server and Zarius had it running on their server. And as a result of running those two beta tests, well, actually it was three because Lizard Mods also ran it on his live server. So having those three beta testers out there, they came across a bunch of different edge case scenarios where it was very, very rare that it might happen, but it was something that they wanted to deal with before it came a problem for a bunch of other people. So I'm not going to go into the details of all of the different situations that they rectified because honestly, there's just way too many of them to go over in one video. Plus, you don't necessarily even care what they are as long as the problems have been fixed. So just to give you an idea of what plugins have been touched by Bag of Holding in order to get rid of this conflict. This is just some of the plugins that are included in that list. There's also a conflict notification. So if something does come up and Bag of Holding notices that it's conflicting with another plugin or another plugin is conflicting with something else having nothing to do with Bag of Holding, it's actually going to notify you that this problem is happening. Plus it's going to give you a suggestion on maybe what you can do to fix it. Or worst case scenario, you can send this information to the developer, Black Lightning, and see if he can't come up with some sort of a solution and then put out an update and hope hopefully save somebody else from having that same problem. Another thing worth mentioning is this GUI that you're seeing, the bag of holding GUI, is completely custom built from the ground up just for this plugin. Black Lightning had to come up with a system that was more performant than the systems that are already out there so that you, as the end user of this plugin, don't feel a bunch of performance losses because of bag of holding. Anyways, the, the list is just ongoing. There's so many different things that I could be telling you about, so many edge case scenarios, so many conflicts that they had to overcome along the way. It's just an incredible incredible amount of time and energy that has been put into the development of Bag of Holding. All right, so we've very quickly realized that we don't have enough room in our Bag of Holding bags. It's time to get into upgrades. So let's go into our permissions manager again. Let's go into Bag of Holding. The rest of these permissions are all basically related to the different upgrade levels. So this is something you need to decide if you want to have happening on your server. So if you want your players to be able to upgrade their bags from one level to the next level to the next level, and then however many levels up you want to allow them to go, you need to make those decisions based on permissions. If you wanted to have it set up on your server so that no player could ever actually upgrade one of these bags and they could only buy them from let's say vending machines or buy them from different vendors or let's say you have server reward set up stuff like that there's different ways that you can do this obviously the easiest way is just to allow your player to upgrade their bags as they see fit so once we have all of these permissions granted of course now we have the ability and permission to upgrade these bags so let's get into that a little bit all right so now that we have all of those permissions granted and i can upgrade to all of the different levels that are available for bag of holding when i hit my hot key to open up my bag of holding now you can see a different button next to the gather on and off button now we can click on the upgrade button so for each different level of upgrade it's going to cost us a different value in whatever currency we have set up by default this is set up to scrap so if we want to upgrade some more this one's going to cost me 200 I want to upgrade again this one's going to cost me 300 so on and so forth and as you upgrade your bag so does your icon that shows up in your inventory All right, so now I have all of my different bag types upgraded to, I think, fourth level or fifth level, something like that, which of course now, as you can see, I have 24 slots of storage in each one of these bags. I can scroll through the bags right here. Each one has 24 slots. So now if I have the gather turned on on all of my different types of bags, let's see what happens when I zip through this inventory real quick. So as you can see, it's not going into my inventory. It is, of course, going into my bag of holding bags. Let's see if we're almost full up there some components again not showing up on my inventory because it's going into my bag of holding bags uh, we've got some weapons here let's do the same thing there as you can see here we have a ton of storage inventory right on my player character and if i hit my hotkey to go into each individual bag boom now you can see where all of that inventory went there's my weapons there's my clothing there's my items there's my components and resources just Amazing. I cannot stress to you enough how cool I think this plugin is. Maybe I'm romanticizing this a bit. I don't know. You guys need to let me know in the comment section down below. Is this plugin actually as cool as I think it is? Because as it stands right now, I can't find a downside to this plugin. I really can't. I'm just going to go through quickly and turn off gather mode on each one of these bags. 
And as you can see there, now I have a lightning bolt where that flame used to be before, indicating that there is something actually in this bag. And then of course, the orange indicator bar on the left-hand side is showing you how full that bag actually is. As you can see, everything works. It's flawless, it's performant, it feels smooth. It's not quite one of those plugins where I would say this feels like a native feature. You can definitely feel that this is an aftermarket plugin, but he's done a really nice job of making it seamless into the game. If you didn't know any better, you could think this was natively built into vanilla rust. Okay, so we only have a couple more things that I want to go over before we actually dive into the configuration file, which isn't going to take us very long. But the one bag that I haven't told you anything about yet is what's called the bag of holding bag. This guy right here is the Big Mama Jama. Like I said before, it's 42 or 48 slots, I forget. We can treat this just like any other backpack. We can treat this just like any other bag of holding. We can put items inside of it. Plus, we can be putting all of our bag of holding bags inside of our bag of holding. I know it gets a little bit confusing. I'm using the same terminology, but whatever, you get the idea. So now we can see that all of our bag of holding bags are all inside of our bag of holding. And we can still scroll through the same way as we did before by using the hotkey button. Obviously the first press is gonna go into my main inventory which only has a bag of holding bag. If I press that same button again, it's gonna start scrolling through each one of my individual bag of holding bags inside of that bag of holding. I'm getting tired of saying bag of holding. Now the one last thing that I wanna show you before we get into the configuration file is the ability to change what these bags actually look like in our inventory. Right now, this is what's called the fantasy version of the bag of holding. There's also a leather version and a tactical version. The tactical version is obviously the coolest in my opinion. So I'm gonna show you the leather one first. So if you go back to the documentation page for bag of holding, if you scroll near the bottom of the page, you're gonna see this alternative bag skin section. So if we open up the fantasy bag skin section, you're going to see a list of commands that you would need to run in order to switch everything back to the fantasy bags after we've switched them to the leather and then the tactical which is exactly what we're going to do here in a minute so let's go into the leather bag skins and we just simply want to run each one of these lines separately inside of our console it should only take you about 10 seconds to run each line it doesn't take very long you can just copy pasta directly from the documentation page right into your server console so i'm going to change everything over from the fantasy bag skins over to the leather bag skins so that's what everything looks like after we've converted it over to the leather skins. And this of course is what everything looks like after we've converted everything over to the tactical bag skins. And it should be fairly obvious why this is my favorite version of bag of holdings because these tactical bags look badass. I'm not gonna lie. All right, so it's time that we deal with the configuration. This is the last important detail of this video. And there's a couple of really important points that I wanna direct your attention to. So don't glaze over this section. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is this document is just over 1800 lines long, 1853 to be exact. This may look like an absolute monster of a configuration file, but it's really not. Do not be intimidated by its size. If you're smart about it and break it down by each individual section, it's actually not that big of a deal. To give you an example, if we were to close up all of these different areas, it's much more palatable like this. Now this is obviously a feature of Notepad++, depending on what type of hosting you're doing will determine whether you have this ability. I know Iced Host has this ability as well. So we've already kind of dealt with this section, the UI settings. If you are gonna have that icon on your screen next to your hotbar and you want to move it over, this is where you would do that. You would change this offset X, either right or left, depending on where you want it to be. You want to have the bag selector enabled, which is what you've seen me using so far in this video. And then once we're done with that section, of course, we can just minimize that again and move on to the next section. So this section is the sound effects that are used, whether you're upgrading or opening or whatever it is that you're doing, interacting with those bags. Okay, so this loot spawn section is a little bit weird because as it stands right now with the information that I have today at the recording of this video, we need to use a loot controller that gives us the ability to define an item as well as an item skin. The list of all of the skin IDs of course are available on the documentation page for Bag of Holding. However, so far I've found that Better Loot does not allow us to do that and Magic Loot does not allow us to do that. So I don't know if we can automatically use the Bag of Holding plugin to inject these bags into our loot table. In fact, as it stands right now, I'm going to say no, I don't think so. However, if you were using Alpha Loot, that changes because Alpha Loot allows you to define an item as well as its skin. So as long as we have loot spawn 
ones enabled in the configuration file, which by default, this is set to false, it should inject these bags into the loot table already there. So if you're gonna utilize this method, make sure you turn on this delay right here. So by default, this delay is set to false. You're gonna to want to enable this section. So what this does is it delays the plugin. It allows alpha loot to do its thing and generate all of the loot all over the map. And then after the delay expires, then bag of holding will go in and adjust the loot in each one of those containers. And then down below that section, we get to define what type of bag can be found in what type of container. So we've got a breakdown of all of the different loot containers all over the map, the barrels, the boxes, all of these other things, as well as the different types of bags that can be found in each one of them. You of course can go through this list and change it to your heart's desire to make the determination of what kind of bag is going to appear in what kind of loot container as your players are going around looting your map. It is also worth noting that we've got the Bradley crate as well as the heli crate on there already set up. And by default in those crates, if you took down one of those items, the Bradley or the heli, you have the potential of finding a bag of holding in each one of those containers. And that percentage is, it looks like 100%. By default, it's 100%. Once we're done with the loot spawn section, let's minimize that back up again. And then we can get into the player bag limits. Now the player bag limits is the section that I was referring to earlier, as long as you don't have that unlimited permission granted to you. So like I was saying before, by default, in the default group, you can have a maximum of three bag of holding bags on your inventory with items in them. And by default, you can have zero in your backpack. And by default, you can have three bag of holding bags with items inside of them, inside of your loot containers, inside your base or whatever. But if we have the unlimited permission granted to us, all of those rules go out the window. We can have as many bag of holding bags in our inventory, in our backpack, and in our loot containers as our heart desires. There's essentially no rules when it comes to that. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a warning right here because this has the potential of allowing your players to have a ton of loot all over your map inside their base. They can hide these things like think of how much loot you would be able to hide inside of just a small stash using the plug-in bag of holding. So just be aware of these limitations and make sure you put them to good use. Once we're done with that, let's go into bag content rule sets. So now this is where we get to define what can actually be put into the different types types of bags. Now these next two sections right here is what makes this config document so large because each individual bag type and size has their own set of rules as to what items can be put in them. So let's just have a look at this one section right here. This is just one type of bag right now. As you can see above and below this, there's the different types of bags. But the functionality of this section of the configuration file is exactly the same. We're not gonna go through each individual bag type because it's all the same. So we've got the armor and clothing bag. So in here, it defines what items are allowed to go inside the armor and clothing bag of holding. If we wanted to disallow items, so define items that we don't want to ever land inside of a bag of holding bag we could list those items in here the disallowed items category or we could do the exact same thing with individual item short names let's say we only wanted to allow certain skins to go into the bag of holding bag we could define that here or let's say there was a specific list of skins that we did not want to ever allow going into a bag of holding bag we would list those skin IDs here. So that's basically what this entire section is all about. I've found that by default, most of this section could be left alone. Maybe there's some specific tweaking that you need to do for your server specific, but for the general population, this section of the configuration can be left alone. So now the last section is bag profiles. So this section right here is 1500 lines of different options that are available. And this breaks down into very, very specific details, which is why it's so big. So I just scrolled down into this section a little bit till I could find the armored clothing XX small. So this is where we get to define the rules, the upgrade ability, how much it's gonna cost, the different types of currency that we want to be able to use in order to perform these upgrades. We can also change how many slots are available for each individual size of bag. Like I said before, by default, this is set up pretty good. I don't really know why you'd wanna change this up, but you definitely can. This is your plugin, you can do whatever you want with it. This is where we get to define what it costs to upgrade from one level of bag into the next level of bag. And then of course, what type of currency we wanna use by default, it's set to scrap. And by default, this particular upgrade is set to 100 scrap. Depending on the type of economy that you have going on your server, you may want to raise or lower that price of upgrading. But of course, if you're gonna do that, make sure you go through all of the different levels of bags and adjust that pricing accordingly. And then down below that, we get to define whether these bags are gonna be recyclable or not. And if they are, 
what they recycle into. Now this is set to false by default, which means you can't recycle these bags. However, all you'd have to do is toggle this to true and then decide what item you wanted it to recycle back into. So by default, this is set to scrap. This particular bag would recycle into 100 scrap. I also have it on good authority that sometime down the road, we might be able to recycle an upgraded bag into two of whatever the previous or smaller bag was before it was upgraded. I don't know that for sure. It was just part of our conversation the other night. So from a very high level view, that's essentially what the configuration file looks like. As you can see, there's a ton of different configuration modifications that you can do to make this plugin fit better into your server. I really like how a lot of the default settings are. But again, like I said before, depending on what your economy is like, you may want to increase or decrease some of these prices so that it's more in line with what your economy looks like. And then of course, as always, we would save this file and then reload the plugin for all of these changes that we just made to take effect on our server. So now some of you may not want to inject these bag of holding bags into your loot table and that's fine. You don't necessarily have to, but what you are going to want to do is make a way so that your players can actually get access to them. So we can set these up in our shop so that players can actually go to the shop UI and buy it directly from that. Or if you use server rewards, same thing. You can add these items into your server rewards menu. No problem. But what I chose to do on my test server was actually add it to a vending machine. So by using custom vending setup, I was able to actually add these bags directly into a vending machine at my outpost. So obviously these prices aren't very reflective what they would be on a real live server. However, you can adjust these prices to whatever you want them to be. And of course, if you're not familiar with custom vending setup, I'm going to put a tag in the top right hand corner right there. You should go check out that section because there's a ton of different things that you can do, not just bag of holding stuff. Once that's all done, of course, we can buy things just like we normally would. They go directly into our inventory. And there we go. We've just purchased all of the different types of bags that are available all directly from the vending machine at the outpost. I really do feel like I could go on and on and on about this plugin. There's a ton of different things that I could be telling you about. There's a ton of complications that they've come across during the development of the plugin that I'd love to be able to tell you all about. However, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. I would like to take this opportunity to do a little shout out for Lizard Mods. He's also a YouTuber and he actually put together the first video that's available for Bag of Holding. I'm going to put the link to his video video on bag of holding in the video description down below. So make sure you go check him out as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to him and don't forget to like and subscribe to me. Now, if you've waited this long into the video, that means you really want to buy this plugin, but you don't want to be spending $49.95 on it. So here it is. My promo code that is going to save you 20 US dollars off of the purchase price is bag of bull. No, I didn't come up with that promo code. Black lightning did. That's fine. As long as it saves you guys money, I don't care what it says. And yes, I did chuckle when he sent that to me. So this promo code is only valid for a limited time. This isn't going to be an ongoing promotion forever. If you happen to be watching this video in the future, you've probably missed out on that deal and you're probably going to be forced to pay the $49.95. So if you're looking at picking up this plugin, now is the time. Don't wait. Make sure you save yourself that 20 bucks. All right, before I let you go, if you want to check out another plugin built and designed by Black Lightning, click this box right here. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you click on this button to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next week.